welcome back. We're talking with James Horak, and the phone lines are open. We have time for one, maybe two calls uh, in this uh, final approach section of the show. James, tell us about Moth Men. Well, I give all the credit to John Keel. John Keel uh, would go out into the uh, the field, talk to people, soliciting what they knew, not feeding them what he wanted to hear. And uh, he was an excellent anomalist. Uh, I cut my teeth on uh, his book, Shadu. And uh, I... I I know that uh, the book that he wrote after Jadu, which was on uh, Lemuria, was a bit fanciful. But uh, as far as being an in-depth investigator in anomaly and ufology, he was tops. I, I uh, have every regard for him. And his Mothman prophecies, the book, is nothing like the movie that was done, and people need to realize that. Uh, the book is strictly uh, first-hand information that he took in the field studying a flat in the northeast just prior to the to a major power shortage. And uh, uh, he was taking accounts of people that were having experiences with Mothman, usually around uh, abandoned military installations and ammo dumps. And... Uh, they were getting messages. The messages weren't clear, but they were uh, interesting. And uh, if you ever read the book, Mothman Prophecies, it has the first account of a female MIB in it, and it's very interesting. So I'm sure you've read it, Ken. Yeah, I've read it. Haven't you? I have. All right, uh, let's take our final call. Uh, caller, you are live on the Kevin Smith Show. Your first name, and sorry you didn't hang on. Okay, we won't take any more calls then because we're just about out of time. Let me check our flash message board real quick and see if we've got any late messages uh, from the United Kingdom. Do the powers that shouldn't be have technology that will deceive the eye and make people think they are seeing ET craft when, in fact, it's our own aircraft. And do you know what their plans are for that? Excellent. Yes, indeed they do. But it, it's, it's, not all, it's not their aircraft that they use it off of. It's power lines. But, uh, wait a minute. Uh, they project from off of the power lines? Yes. That's one of the questions that I asked hypnotherapists over 10 years ago when they decided they didn't want to have anything more to do with me. I asked them, uh, how many of your abductees have had their abduction experience within so many uh, yards of a power grid of any kind? Well, I, I'm sure there are a lot of them. But now there are a lot of abductions that take place out in the middle of the desert, too, where there aren't any power lines. Well, there, there, there are three kinds of abductions. There's a broadcast mind control abduction, like off of a power line. And all of these are, are, are implemented and supervised by uh, military black ops. And then there's the, the, the actual early type EB abduction, which is very rare now. And then there's the the abduction where they use an EB craft, but it's actually uh, black ops doing it. And uh, now we don't have but just a few minutes here, but why? Why would black ops want to go around picking people up, making them think it's extraterrestrial, and then returning them? Why would they do that? They're running DNA experimentation. They're keeping the pot stirred to, to create the myth of hostile aliens. Uh, they're developing a set of, of, uh, of, let's say, communicable hysteria. And uh, they're hiding, you know, it's, it's a front for something else. It's a cover for something else. 
So then a very small percentage of these um, abductions, from what you're saying, a very small percentage would be legitimate extraterrestrials uh, doing the abducting. Yes, today. To begin with, that's not true, but uh, how many... How many times do you have to, to probe a species to figure out what you need to know if you're not up to uh, an agenda of some sort? Well, that's a good point. You would think they would know by now. Or they would have known by 50 years ago. Well, especially if, these, uh, if they've been coming here for thousands of years, as we are told, uh, they certainly would know by now what we're all about. There's one exception to that. What is that? Calaris. What is that? Calaris is an Amazonian island in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was visited by E.T. for months. And just about everyone in this village was, was probed. And the military sent down a detachment headed by an officer who, who studied it while it was ongoing. It's, it, it is more significant than Roswell. It's more significant than any other flap or UFO event. But it's downplayed by American ufologists simply because they're lazy. <laughs> this is the one where the, uh, the military guy uh, that, that led this expedition to study what was happening ended up later... Uh, well, it was reported that he committed suicide later. Is that, is that the one? Yes. Well, before he committed suicide, he met with ufologists, and he gave them his drawings. He gave them uh, all the information he had, and he talked to them about his encounter with uh, an E.T. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting. Why did he commit suicide? He did afterwards, and I believe he did commit suicide. Mm -hmm. oh, but why did he? Well, if you put a man in a situation like he was put into, and this was years, this was like 20 years, uh, 25 years later that mm -hmm. he did this, but if you put him in that situation and you leave him uh, without... Uh, being able to, to go any further than I just, I know this exists, but I don't know enough, uh, it will create an emptiness. It will create a, a, it's exactly like a super spy that retires, uh, he sits there twiddling his thumbs, he's used to, be, to having his ear to all this intrigue, and you take it away and, and he's empty. Well, that's what happened to this man. All right, James, as always, it's been a great pleasure to have you here on the show. It's been an eye-opener, and uh, I want to thank you for that, and I hope you'll come back and be with us again. If you will, stay on the line with me for just a moment as we come to the close of the show. To our members, let me say that after we get the shows loaded up on the website tonight, uh, I will go take a look at the chat room and see what is the problem. I don't know what the problem is, but we'll find out what the problem is. And we'll get it working again, all right? And uh, I want to uh, thank our listener who wrote in and told me about that, because I think it was working yesterday, but I was in there doing things uh, in, in the uh, members area and moving some pages here and there and doing some things to clean up and make it look better and make it work better. And who knows, maybe I am why it isn't working, why the chat room isn't working. We'll get it fixed for you, though. All right, that's going to be a wrap for this evening, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Tomorrow night, it's going to be BYOT, Bring Your Own Topic, and we'll be open line, so we'll have plenty of time for everybody to get in and say what's on their mind. My friends call me Steel Eye, my enemies do too. And you can call me whatever you want to call me, just keep coming back again and again and again. Until next time, so long everybody.